speaker is Dr. Amrit Lal oh, Meena. Yeah. Uh, Amrit Lal Meena is scientist, soil science. As we all know that composting is one of the important component which needs to be addressed and different bio waste which are generated from the system itself can be converted successfully into different types of composts. So he'll be throwing a light on how to make compost out of different substrates and what are the different methods of preparation of compost. So Dr. Amrit Lal Meena, I welcome you in the second day of the training program. And I request you to kindly start delivering your lecture. Thank you, madam. So good morning, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, slides are shareable, no, madam? Aha, share ho gayi. Oh. So, Good morning, everyone, and I welcome you for my lecture. So today I will cover the different methods of composting for organic farming. And during my lecture, first of all, we will discuss a little bit about the organic agriculture and then what are the concepts of organic farming. Then we will discuss about the what are the compost and manures. And then finally, we will discuss about the compost. That what is the definition of compost? What are the processes? what are the different kind of microorganisms involved in the uh, composting process and major emphasis will be on the factors affecting the composting process and what are the different phases for composting then i will discuss about the major some major uh, different methods which are following in our country for preparation of compost and then we will discuss about the conclusions so coming to the organic agriculture, organic agriculture is a holistic production management system which promotes and enhances the agroecosystem health, including biodiversity, biological cycles, and the soil biological activity. The major emphasis of organic farming is to maintain the diversity of our soil as well as to reduce the environmental pollution of the, uh, from our agriculture sector. It emphasizes the use of on-farm inputs, take into account the regional conditions require locally adapted systems. The, this is accomplished by using, where possible, agronomic, biological, and mechanical methods as opposed to using the synthetic materials. Uh, we all know that as we are practicing the organic farming, so we all know that the organic agriculture avoids the use of synthetic fertilizers which are produced in our factories and we are totally dependent on the on-farm inputs which are available on our farm. Now, according to the IFOAM, which is International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement, the definition of organic agriculture is, organic agriculture is a production system that maintains the health of soil, ecosystem and people. It depends on the ecological processes biodiversity and local conditions, which adapt to local conditions rather than the use of adverse impact inputs. Organic agriculture combines the tradition, innovation, and science to benefit the shared environment and promotes fair relationship and a good quality of life for all involved in the organic agriculture. So this is the standard definition given by the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement for Organic Farming. Now, what are the different concepts of organic farming? Yesterday, in one of the lectures during the nutrient management, Dr. Miraj has already uh, covered the concepts, but I will again, I will tell you that organic farming endorses the concept that the soil, plant, animal, and human, being, begin, uh, human beings are linked. Means, in case of the organic farming, whatever we are producing on our farm, Whatever the uh, agriculture inputs are, uh, agriculture outputs and product, uh, products are generating from our farms, they are going to not only going to the human uh, human beings, but they are also going to our animals. So the, in the case of organic farming, we are interlinked. Not only the farm, but the animal and the uh, human beings, those who are involved in organic farming, we are interlinked in case of the organic farming. And the concept of organic farming is to protect the long-term fertility of the soils. In case of the synthetic fertilizers, like if you are applying the urea or if you are applying the uh, single superphosphate or any other the uh, synthetic fertilizers, those you, those you are applying in your farm, 
they are directly providing the nutrient like urea it will mineralize within 3 to 7 days when you are applying in the field but in case of the organic inputs when we are applying they are protecting our the long term fertility of the soil and that is the motto of our organic farming organic farming provides the crop nutrients directly or indirectly directly when we are applying the organic inputs in our soil uh, only the 30% of the organically applied uh, nutrients are available to the first crop and remaining nutrients will be applied uh, will be available to the subsidy, uh, succeeding crops which we will take in the future then nitrogen self sufficiency through the use of legumes and biological nitrogen fixation in case of organic farming we are uh, using the crop cycles we are using the pulses uh, along with our cereals and other crops so through the nitrogen fixation we can uh, take the nitrogen self sufficiency in case of the organic farming then weed disease pest control through the crop rotations natural predators diversity organic manures and resistance varieties if we are using we can control the weed disease and pest pests also in our organic farms and then extensive management of the live stock live stock is the integral part of our organic farming now since organic farming means placing farming on integral relationship we should be well aware about the relationship which is between the soil water and plants and which uh, between the soil soil microbes and the waste products between the uh, vegetable kingdoms and the animal kingdoms and then between the agriculture and the forestry and between the soil water and atmosphere means during the organic farming when we are take, uh, we are going for organic farming we have to keep in mind about the integral relationship of these components we have to uh, understand the uh, relationship between the soil and water and plants then soil and soil microbes because the microbes have an integral part of the organic farming they mineralize the nutrients and provide the nutrients to the uh, plants so we have to understand about the different relationships available in our soil environment now coming to the manures and compost what are the manures and what are the compost so manures are the plant and animal waste that are used as a source of plant nutrients usually manures have been divided in two parts based on the nutrient availability so bulk organic manures and concentrated organic manures so why these bulky organic manures are called uh, bulky organic manures because they have the less amount of nutrient and that's why they need in the bulk amount and concentrated organic manures they are basically also known as the organic nitrogen fertilizers also and these concentrated organic manures they have the high amount of nutrients and required in the less quantity that's why they are known as the bulk, uh, concentrated organic manure so if we talk about that bulky organic manures con uh, contain small percentage of the nutrient and they are applied in large quantities and for the examples of the bulky organic manures are your farmyard manures compost and green manures these are the examples of your bulky organic manures and concentrated organic manures have higher nutrient content than bulky organic manures and the important concentrated organic manures are oil cakes blood meals fish meals many are there they have the higher amount of the nutrients as compared to your bulky organic manure now coming to the uh, compost or an organic matter which has been degraded by action of the microorganisms like bacteria fungi actinomycetes over the period of time is known as the compost means whatever the organic material you are using for preparation uh, of organic manure that will be degraded by the bacteria actinomycetes fungi and many other organisms which are available in to the uh, which are available in your uh, composting material and this will be converted into the compost many types of organic matter such as your leaves straw fruit and vegetable peelings and and manures can be used to make the compost the degraded end products is very different from the original material and the final material will be dark brown crumbly and has a pleasant smell smell now what are the benefits of compost compost is easily available this is cost effective and easy to prepare it improve the soil structure when you are using the organic manures they will not only improve your soil physical properties but they will improve the Uh, nutrient availability as well as the bio biological diversity of your soil 
They improve the aeration, drainage, and erosion, improve the soil water holding capacity. As per the many studies conducted over the world, the organic manures, they can hold five times of their weight. Water, they can hold the water five, time, five times of their weight. And they improve the soil microbial diversity, add nutrients to the soil and improve nutrient availability, reduces the greenhouse gas emission from the organic, uh, organically managed fields, and utilizes the soil. If, they, if any soil is alkali soil or if any soil is acid soil, if you are continuously applying the uh, organic manures in such type of soils, these soils will convert into the neutralized soils. Now, how you will prepare the compost? Compost can be prepared using many materials product uh, produced from the households and agricultural farms, which we, we call the waste otherwise. It means the waste materials which are produced from our uh, farms as well as our the, uh, houses, they can be used for the preparation of uh, compost materials. There are many methods of making compost out of which you may also know about the many of these means several methods are following uh, not only in our country but across the world several methods are uh, following for the compost preparation. Then traditionally organic residue are piled up in a pit or as an open heap and that compound is left unmanaged means uh, since the long back uh, you have seen in your villages that uh, the whatever the material waste material is coming from our dairy uh, dairy or as well as from our household or from the our agricultural fields we left it uh, unmanaged and uh, that is uh, that compost that material will degrade during the time but what are the uh, harmful effects of that that they are directly coming into the contact of the sunlight as well as the rain and the nutrients which are available in such compost heap will be lost uh, either through the volatilization or through the leaching by the rainfall action. On the other hand, if you are managing the compost by scientific method, then you not only have the higher nutrient uh, material, but also it will be rich in biodiversity also. Now, basically today we will discuss about that, what are the phases and factors involved in the composting process? because many of the composting uh, methods you already known. So basically we will discuss about that during the composting process, what are the different phases and the factors involved. So if we talk about the phases, there are four phases. First phase is when you are uh, preparing the compost, fresh material you are using, the temperature will be high as because the several types of microorganisms will be involved. Then it will convert into the thermophilic phase, temperature will go, or further it will go to high, then the material will be degraded and then the cooling phase will come and finally the maturation phase where the our final compost will be prepared. If we talk about the factors, there are several factors involved in the composting process. These are the aeration, carbon dioxide, moisture, temperature, carbon and nitrogen ratio, pH of the material which you are using and finally the particle size. So, yes. Okay, so first we will discuss about the phases and then one by one we will take the factors involved in the uh, composting process. So if we, talk, uh, the, if we talk about the phase, the first phase is the hot phase that is known as the mesophilic phase. When you are the composting process, when the composting process is started, an ambient temperature and few days after it will go up to the high, uh, temperature will rise up to 45 degrees Celsius. Fresh material you are using. So this fresh material will be uh, digested by these several types of microorganisms and due to the metabolic activities of these microorganisms, the temperature of the uh, composting uh, pit will be increased and it will go up to 45 degrees Celsius. After uh, 10 to 15 days, if you insert your hand into the composting material, so you will feel that temperature is high as compared to the initial phase when you started the composting process. The metabolic activity of various heterogeneous group of microorganisms microorganisms result in the increased temperature as these microbes utilize the nitrogen and carbon present into the organic matter for their body assimilation. Yani ki microbial metabolic activities ke liye, they will use the uh, whatever the organic material available in that uh, composting material. Decomposition of soluble compounds such as the sugars produces the organic acid and hence the pH can be dropped means at the initial stage, when you are starting the composting process, the microorganisms, 
due to their metabolic activities they will release several types of low molecular weight organic acids and these organic acids will degrade degrade the easily decomposable materials like starch sugars and other things uh, proteins whatever available in your composting material and that's why the ph of your uh, composting material will goes down at the initial stage and it goes as as, as low as to 4 to 4.5 ph level now coming to the second phase that is called as the curing phase or thermophilic phase or hygienization phase means during this phase when the temperature of the parent organic material attain the temperature higher than the 45 degrees celsius means after the degradation of your initial easily de uh, decomposable organic materials like sugars and proteins and other things the decomposition of your little bit hard materials like lignin cellulose hemicellulose will take place and the microorganisms will uh, again due to their metabolic activity the temperature will again uh, rise and, and the temperature will goes as much high, as much as to the 70 degree celsius temperature and that's why during the high temperature all the pathogens all the insect pests and other weed seeds whatever Uh, present into your organic material will be destroyed by these uh, the high level of temperature so when the temperature of the parent organic material attain the temperature higher than the 45 degrees celsius the mesophilic microorganisms are replaced by the thermophilic microorganism microorganisms yani ki initial stage pe when we are applying the organic material uh, organic when we are using the organic matter for decomposition the mesophilic microorganisms will work and then after some days these mesophilic microorganisms will be replaced by the thermophilic microorganisms and these thermophilic microorganisms facilitate the degradation of the complex organic mater materials like cellulose and lignins etc conversion of nitrogen into ammonia by the thermophilic microbes resulted in the ph rise initial stage due to the A release of low molecular organic acids the ph will goes down and it will goes to as low as 4 to 4.5 but during the thermophilic phase the nitrogen will be convert into ammonia and again the ph will rise to the neutral neutral neutralized phase uh, to the neutral value and it will goes up to 7 or 7.5 like it will goes to the level of 7 or 7.5 level in uh, particular over the 60 degree celsius temperature bacteria producing the spores and actinobacteria which are responsible for breaking down the vexes hemicellulose and other compounds of carbon complexes begin to develop high temperature of the compost pile during the this phase helps in killing of the contaminants and bacteria of fecal or origins like the e coli salmonella etc helminthes cysts and eggs and phyto uh, phyto pathogens fungi spores and weed seed these these all pathogens will be killed by the thermophilic uh, microbes during the thermophilic phase then third phase will be uh, the cooling phase or the mesophilic phase second so uh, in the first phase mesophilic uh, microorganisms degraded the uh, your easily decom decomposable material in the second phase temperature uh, temperature will be rise and then uh, the thermophilic bacteria will uh, degrade the uh, cellulose and cellulose material and then again the temperature will goes down and then after the exhaust of carbon and nitrogen sources from the composting material temperature of the uh, the compost pile decreases again uh, again to the 40 to 45 degrees celsius and during the mesophilic phase polymers degradation as cellulose continues and some fungi visible by the next time you can see the fungi ips in the third phase and as the temperature goes below 40 degree celsius activity of mesophilic organisms resumes and ph of the compost pile decreases slightly whereas in the general ph of the compost pile remains slightly alkaline some fungi can some fungi can develop and even produce visible structures and this cooling phase requires several weeks and may be confused with the maturation phase and this then last will be the maturation phase or final phase and during the maturation phase the temperature of the compost pile will drops to ambient temperature like 20 to 30 degrees celsius temperature will be there and condensation of carbonaceous compounds and polymerization occurs which further helps in the formulation of fulvic and the humic acids means your uh, compost will uh, your composting material will convert into the final compost now coming to the factors 
So if we talk about the aeration, so the ambient aeration level should be 5 to 15 uh, percent aeration should be there. Means if it is low aeration, if the uh, aeration level is less than 5 percent, then the aerobic microorganisms cannot be developed and there will be anaerobic condition and incomplete decomposition of your uh, composting material will take place. And if it is more than 15 percent, so in that case, the temperature will not rise and then pathogen killing will not be happened in the composting material. So the ambient temperature should be, uh, amb ambient aeration level should be 5 to 15 percent for ideal preparation of the composting material. Now coming to the carbon dioxide, among the different type of composting processes, oxidation of carbon into the biomass and carbon dioxide by the microorganisms takes, uh, takes place due to the respiration and photosynthesis by diverse micro microbes during the decomposition process. Generally, an amount of 2 to 3 kg carbon dioxide per ton of composting material is generated and which is already used by the microbes for their body assimilation. So during the uh, composting processes, very less amount of carbon dioxide is generated. Now coming to the moisture, moisture is an important part of your composting process. So the moisture percent should be the 40 to 45 to 60 degree, uh, 60 percent ideal range for the moisture percentage. Means the, there should be, like in case of your field, you are saying that field capacity moisture should be there. Like that in our case composting material, the moisture percent should be between 45 to 60 percent. If it is less than 45 percent, then very dry material will be there and it is very uh, difficult for the microbes to digest the uh, dry material. And if it is more than 60 percent, then there will be clogging will be there and anaerobic conditions will be generated. So ideal range should be 45 to 60 percent. And in that case, you can do that in summer if you are preparing the composting material during the summer, then ideally spray the moisture uh, once a day. Means uh, anytime, either morning or evening, you can spray the moisture. Uh, ideal time is morning time because during the summer, the temperature of daytime will be high. So spray the uh, water during the morning time. And in case of if you are preparing in winters, then uh, after the gap of seven days, you can apply the moisture for preparation of your composting material. Now, temperature already told that the ideal temperature range for aerobic composting is 20 to 70 degrees Celsius. And uh, during the aerobic composting, the temperature goes as high as the 70 degrees Celsius, as I earlier told. That, and this will help to kill all the pathogens present into your composting material. Now, the pH range, the ideal pH range is 4.5 to 8.5. And uh, I told you that uh, the pH range. When initial phase of your composting material, during the initial phase, pH range will be goes down. And then during the further phases, like your second thermophilic phase, then mesophilic second, and then maturation phase, again the temperature, again the pH of your uh, composting material will come to the neutral range. Now the carbon nitrogen ratio, it is very important to maintain the carbon nitrogen ratio of the composting material. If the carbon nitrogen ratio is very high, then it is very difficult for the microorganisms to digest such a, uh, organic material. And that's why the uh, ideal carbon nitrogen ratio of a composting material it should be between 15 is to 1 to 35 is to 1. Now coming to the particle size, the particle size, the ideal range of your particle size for composting material should be 5 to 30 centimeters. Means if the particle size of your composting material is less than five, uh, five centimeter, means if it is the highly chopped and very small size, then it will easily degraded by the microorganisms. And that's why the composting material will not go to the high level of temperature. And the pathogens present into your composting material will not be killed by the microorganisms because the thermophilic phase not, will not attend properly. And if it is the particle size is higher, if you are not chopping your composting material before applying, then you, and you are applying directly uh, the composting material you are uh, directly using, then in that case, the time uh, of composting process will be high and it will take uh, more time as compared to the uh, ideal size particle uh, you are using for composting process. Now, based on the nature of the microorganisms involved in the decomposition process of the organic waste, Composting can be categorized in the two broad categories. 
means there is one category is aerobic microbes. The aer aerobic microorganisms are involved in the composting process. This is called the aerobic composting. And if it is the anaerobic microorganisms involved in the uh, composting process, that is called the anaerobic micro uh, anaerobic composting process. So if we talk about the aerobic composting, the decomposition of the organic matter using the microorganisms that require the oxygen is known as the aerobic composting. These microorganisms are inhabited naturally in the moisture surrounding the organic matter. And the oxygen diffuses in the moisture from the air is utilized by these aerobic microorganisms for their respiration and the other metabolic activities. And as a result of aerobic decomposition, the final product of your composting process is carbon dioxide, water, and heat are released by, as a byproduct. Now, the, in the aerobic composting, the suitable environment conditions also help in proliferation of diverse bacterial species like the psychrophilic, mesophilic, and thermophilic. As I told earlier that the, uh, during the phases, three types of microorganisms are uh, involved. And these microorganisms are basically cl classified as the first level decomposers, second level decomposers, and the third level decomposers. You can see in the figures that the first level of decomposer Decomposers are the microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, echinomycetes, etc. Then second level uh, decomposers are the springtails, nematodes, mites, and protozoa. And now finally, third level decomposers, they eat the second level decomposers. And these are the ants, beetles, centipedes, worms, flies, millipedes, like these are the different kinds of uh, microorganisms are involved. And then through this process, the final composting process will be prepared. Now, this is the figure which tell about the temperature, pH, and oxygen in the composting process. If you see the first phase, that is the mesophilic phase, then second will be thermophilic, then thermophilic, uh, mesophilic second, and then maturation phase. And now you see the oxygen percent, and other, another side is the temperature, and then how the different uh, materials like the sugar degradation will be done by the bacteria, and then acidification will be there, then fungi will be activated, and they will degrade the hemicellulose and other uh, parts of the wax like that uh, parts they will degrade. Then again, the bacteria degrade the polymer degradation. And finally, the second degradation reactions, uh, the actinomycetes will be active and they will degrade the composting material. Now, in case of anaerobic composting, anaerobic composting generally takes place in the nature. Composting which progresses without the entang entanglement of oxygen is known as the anaerobic composting. In this process, the organic material is break down by the different species of anaerobic, anaerobic microorganisms. Like the aerobic microorganisms, anaerobic microbes also employ the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other nutrients for the their metabolic development. The major differences between the aerobic and anaerobic composting are breakdown of organic nitrogen to ammonia and organic acids, release the methane from the decomposition of carbon compounds. Means in aerobic compounds, uh, aerobic uh, composting, the final product is our carbon dioxide, water, and heat. But in case of the anaerobic uh, composting, the final product is methane and the other materials like alcohol and other things are released from the anaerobic compost, uh, composting. So there are four phases also involved in case of anaerobic composting. First one is the hydrolysis, which is the first phase. The insoluble complex organic materials like cellulose, hemicellulose, and niglins are the hydrolyzed into the soluble, um, uh, soluble simple amino acids, fatty acids, and sugars. Then second is the second phase is the acidogenesis, in which the fermentative acidogenic bacteria further decompose the remaining complex organic matters into the simple molecules. Uh, under the acidogenesis process, which is the second stage of anaerobic composting. And this third phase of anaerobic composting is acetogenesis. The simple organic uh, molecules created by the acidogenesis process are further digested to acetic acid, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. And the final uh, phase of the anaerobic composting is methanogenesis. The production of methane gas by the methane forming microbes takes place. Now, this is the techniques of the compost, effective composting. I already discussed that what is the, uh, now we are coming that pile size, the heap size, which is basically you are using for the composting process. So if you see, I will show you the heap, that this is the heap that you have, this is the ideal heap for preparation of the composting. Now, for preparation of composting, the pile size should be the 
sufficient enough to avoid the anaerobic zones means it should not be uh, higher high size or it should not be the less size and the ideal size is 2 meter wide 1.5 meter height and not less than 1.1 meter in the uh, length because if you use the uh, high, high height will be higher then in that cases anaerobic zones will be created and if you are using the long long size uh, piles for your preparation of composting material anaerobic anaerobic zones between the uh, lines will be created so piles ideal pile size should be 2 meter wide 1.5 meter height and uh, 1 meter should be uh, that uh, width of your uh, height should be 1.5 meter width should be 2 meter and depth also depth you are using that should be not not more than the 1 meter ventilation different techniques for ventilation such as the uh, punch holes uh, insulation of the bamboo pole bamboo poles evaluated pellet platforms and use of perforated nets are the used for the uh, ventilation in the for aeration process we use different kinds of things like bamboo poles you are using evaluated platforms you are using perforated nets are, are also used now turning is also important part for preparation of the effective composting means you have to turn your uh, the compost uh, after even uh, 15 days of interval or 7 days interval whatever whatever the interval you are using you should turn your composting material and then inoculation is an important part to uh, process, to start the process and to rapid the process of composting you can inoculate the composting material with different kinds of inoculants then supplemental nutrient uh, nutrition also helps in case of preparation of your if you are preparing for true organic farming that we cannot apply the uh, organic uh, you we cannot apply the uh, supplement nutrient nutrition through the synthetic fertilizers but you can apply like uh, when you are preparing the composting so you can use the twigs of your subabul or the other legumes you can use which are already having the nitrogen so you can use them as a supplemental nutrition that will reduce the cn ratio ct ratio or cs ratio and it will uh, rap rapid it will do it will go for the rapid process of your composting material then shredding also i already told that so you have to shred the material before uh, start of the composting now these are the material which cannot be used for compost preparation that materials such as the plants which have been recently sprayed with the uh, any kinds of pesticides or herbicides meat scraps as they may attract the other ray, ray, other kinds of pests they can uh, um, attract so we should avoid the use of meat scraps then large amount of plant materials that are diseased diseased plant materials should avoid it for preparation of composting material then material with hard prickles or thorns if these materials are chopped up they can be composted but we should not directly use the hard material for preparation of the composting and then persistent perennial weeds we should not use because these weeds uh, seeds will not be destroyed by the composting uh, process so persistent perennial weeds should avoid for preparation of the composting material and non organic materials such as metal glasses should be avoided during the composting process now coming to the uh, preparation of the composting uh, uh, heap so first of all make a heap of uh, heap in a series of layers each layer is about 15 to 25 cm the first layer should be the with coarse material in the base of the composting heap you should use the coarse and woody materials such as the thin uh, sticks or twigs of the plants you can use this will and uh, ensure the good aeration circulation and the drainage of the composting material then add a layer of more difficult to compost material such as the rice straw rice husk or leaves or stem of the maize you can after the adding the coarse material then use some uh, plant materials then after the any uh, this plant materials use animal manures to cover the plant material and then add the green material that is easily composted such as the fresh grass leaves vegetables and fruit residues you can use and then after that uh, spray the ash or urine can be lightly sprinkled on these layers to accelerate the process of decomposition and repeat all these layers I means first layer of coarse material then plant uh, plant material then animal manure then green material and then urine spray repeat these layers up to height of 1 to 1.5 meter this is the ideal uh, size of your composting and ideal uh, uh, composting heap you see base coarse, uh, coarse material plant material are used then straw and husk like that they have repeated the materials up to the height of 1 to 1.5 meter 
Now, these are the various composting techniques which are used in our country. Many are there, but I have covered only some basic, which are for anaerobic composting, Bangalore method, and the passive composting of manure piles. And in case of aerobic composting, many methods are used in our country. Among them, Coimbatore method, indoor method, Chinese rural composting, Brakeley rapid composting method, then effective microorganism-based composting, IBS rapid composting, NADEP composting, windrow, windrow composting, worming compost, and enriched composting. These are the techniques which are used for preparation of different composting materials. So if we talk about the Indian Bangalore method, this is developed by CL Acharya. And CL Acharya developed the method for utilization of the town residues and night soils generated from the towns. And it is hot ferment fermentation method. During this method, the compost production depot is located on the city outskirts. It is a trench method and in which the refuge is filled in the trench to about 15 centimeters high. The night soil is spread over the uh, over this to a layer of 5 centimeters. After filling the pit with refuge and night soil in alternate layers, the pit is filled to the 15 centimeters above the ground layer. And this may be made dome shaped and converted with the thin layer of soil with the red earth or mud to prevent the moisture loss and the breeding of the flies in the composting material. The material are allowed to remain as such without any turning and port watering for about the three months. Uh, watering is sprayed for three months and the compost obtained from the Indian Bangalore method contains the 1.5% of nitrogen, 1% of PTO5 and 1.5% of potassium. This is the how the compost uh, in the Indian Bangalore, Bangalore method is filled. Digging the pit, then foundation layer, and then putting the other layers into the pit, and finally the final layer is covered. Now coming to the India, Indian indoor method, this method was developed by C, Sir A.O. Harvard in 1928 indoor. West materials are chopped into 5 to 10 centimeter pieces and dried to 40 to 50 percent of moisture level. Then they are spread in layers of 10 to 15 centimeter thickness, either in pits or in heap for one meter width one, or four to five uh, meter length and one meter depth. The heap is properly moistened with the dung using earth or night soils. Sufficient quantity of water is sprinkled over the heap to wet composting materials to level of 50% moisture. They have to maintain the moisture level at 50% and then Periodical turnings at the intervals of 15, 30, and 60 days are given to aerate, and the material is converted with a thin layer of uh, soil. And the average composition of manure is 0.8% nitrogen, 0.3% PTO5, and 1.5% of potassium. And this is how it is prepared. Foundation layer is prepared before filling the trench. The bottom and the size of trench should be covered with the mix of dung and water. And then three basic layers. Layer one is the 22-25 centimeter thick layer of mix of dry plant material. Then layer second is 22-25 centimeter thick layer of moist plant material. And third layer is your 5 to 10 centimeter thick layer of animal manures. And this is the NADAP composting, which is very famous among all the even farmers and other the, uh, even the policy, even the researchers, those who are doing research, they use the NADAP composting. And NADAP method of making miracle compost, it is also known as the miracle compost. It was first invented by the farmer and the Pandarande, also popularly known as the NADAP pakka. In this, the process basically involves the placing select layers of different types of compost, uh, compostable materials in a simple mud shield structure designed with brick and mud water. Uh, this is how the uh, NADEP composting is prepared. Alternate uh, bricks are removed to, for the proper aeration in the NADEP composting. And the raw material for preparation of the NADEP composting, agricultural waste up to 1,350 to 1,400 kg you can use. Kettle dung and biogas slurry, 98 to 100 kg. And then fine sieve soil is used, 1675 for soil is used to accelerate the biological activity in your composting material. And the important technique in the manufacturing of NADEP compost is that the entire tank should be filled in one go. We have to fill the tank in case of other type of composting you are preparing, you can prepare the layer. Uh, day by day. But in case of uh, NADEP composting, we have to fill the tank in within the 24 hours and it should not go beyond the 48 hours. The uh, third rule 
brick wall flooring, air vents, green farm technologies or for small and marginal farmer resources center for sustainable development. And before filling the tank is plastered by dilute kettle dung slurry to facilitate the bacterial activity in your composting material. This is, these are the layers which are prepared in the NEDAP composting. This is an ideal NEDAP compost. Now coming to the Indian coimbatore method. This method is uh, involves the digging of a pit. It should be 3.6 meters in length, 180 centimeter wide and the 90 centimeter in deep. And in a shaded area, length can vary according to the volume of waste, waste material which are using. Farm waste such as the straw, vegetable refuse, weeds and leaves are spread to a thickness of 15 to 20 centimeter. Wet materials dung is spread over this layer to a thickness of 5 centimeter. Water is sprinkled to moist, moisten the material 52 centimeter, uh, 52 cent, uh, 60 percent of moisture they have to maintain. And then the procedure is repeated until the whole mass reaches a height of 60 centimeter. And in four weeks, the mass become reduced and the heap flattened and the mud plaster is removed and the entire mass is turned. Aerobic decomposition commences in the stage. Then coming to the window uh, composting material uh, method, this is very famous method and used by many of the farmers. In this, long windrows are prepared for the composting material and these windrows are turned by the mechanic, uh, mechanical used by the machines and these are turned. And uh, for production of the mass level of composting material, window method is very uh, useful method for preparation of mass level composting. Now coming to the enriched composting. And this composting is done to prepare the, uh, the composting material is enriched for uh, different nutrients and the enriching is done during the preparation or at the final stage. See, most of the Indian soils, they are def uh, deficient in the phosphorus. Mainly the enriched composting is done in case of the phosphorus. Because our soils are deficient in the phosphorus, and also yearly removal of phosphorus is more than its addition to uh, pea fertilizer during the continuous and intensive cropping. Biosolids produced in the cities, agro industries, and at the farm normally have low nutrient values, particularly of phosphorus contents. Compost production from these biodegradable waste is presently not an economically viable position. The traditional technology of composting is improved in terms of the nutrient content, may help in arresting trends of nutrient depletion to a greater extent. Further, the use of mineral additives such as the rock phosphate, mica, and pyrites, these are the raw materials which can be used in organic farming for preparation of the enriched compost. The phosphocompost or nitrogen enriched phosphocompost technology has thus been developed using the phosphate solubilizing microorganisms like Aspergillus, Pseudomonas, and Bacillus, etc. Now, raw material which is used for preparation of the enriched composting for production of the one ton of phosphocompost material such as 1,900 kg of organic or vegetable or straw are used, and then 200 kg of cow dung is used, and 250 kg of phosphate rock is used for preparation of one ton of phosphocompost. Now, now, for preparation of the phosphocompost, prepare a base of the heap out of hard, woody materials such as the sticks, bamboo sticks, etc. Then, base should be 15 cm thick and then 3 meter width and 3 meter length should be there, depending on the quantity of material to be composted. Place the biosolids over the base made above and the layer should be 30 cm plus 10 cm thick. Sprinklers will be prepared by mixing the cow dunk and the rock phosphate, then make another layer of crop residue and moisten it with the slurry and then repeat it, the, uh, repeat the layers up to the uh, height of 1.5 meter. So the final product of the uh, phosphocomposting, if we compare the FIM, ordinary compost and the phosphocompost, the nitrogen percent in FIM is 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.8 uh, percent, uh, depending on the merit material which is used for preparation of the FIM. Then ordinary compost contain 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, but in case of phosphocompost, it contains 1.2 1 to 1.4 percent of nitrogen. In case of total phosphorus present in the materials, the phosphocompost contain 2 to 3.5 percent of uh, phosphorus, and the CN ratio is 17 to 80. Now, this is the biodynamic agriculture, which I have covered this year only because many questions are coming for biodynamic agriculture also. So, biodynamic agriculture is an advanced organic farming system which emphasizes on food quality and soil health. 
Biodynamic agriculture was developed out of the eight lectures on agriculture given in 1924 by Rudolf Christiner, an Australian scientist and philosopher. A basic ecological principle of biodynamics is to conceive of the farm as an organism, a self self-contained entity. They contain the they uh, in the biodynamic agriculture. Farm is considered as the living organism and Emphasis is placed on the integration of the crops and livestock, recycling of the nutrients, maintenance of the soil, and the health and well-being of the crops and the animals, and the finally farmer. The fundamental tenet of biodynamic agriculture is that the food raised biodynamically is nutritionally superior and tastes better than the foods produced by conventional method. While biodynamics parallels organic farming in many ways, especially with regards to the cultural and biological practices, farming practices, it is set apart from the other organic agriculture systems by its association with the spiritual science of anthroposophy founded by the Stinner and in its emphasis on farming practices intended to achieve the balance between the physical and higher non-physical realms. So biological practices, may biodynamic farming practices, there are biological practices, green manures, cover cropping, composting, companion plantings, integration of crops and livestock, tillage and cultivation. These are the practices follow in the biodynamic farming. And for preparation of the biodynamic composting, a distinguished feature of biodynamic farming is the use of nine biodynamic preparations described by the, the Stinner. He has described different nine types of biodynamic preparations and we will discuss about the, the first one is the BD500 preparation, which is also known as the horn manure. In this case, the BD500 is made from the cow manure fermented in a cow horn and that is buried in the soil during the cooler months through autumn and the winter. Means during the November to February, the uh, cow manure is uh, placed into the cow horn and then it is buried into the soil and after that it is used for as a spray into the soil. Only cow horns are used, not the bull horns. That is the concept given by them that we have to use the cow horns and the cow horns differs from the bull horn in that it has a series of cowing rings at the base of uh, base and has a solid tip. The dung should be from the lactating cow which will bring in the earth, uh, earthly forces to the preparation and the cow should be fed with good quality of uh, fodder or for two days before filling the horn to ensure the dung is full of vitality. And the earthy polarity attract the earthy forces and help the soil to develop the humus and structure. The second one is the BD501 preparation that is known as the horn silica uh, manure. And in this, the BD501 is made from the powdered parts uh, packed inside a cow horn and buried in the soil for six months to the spring and summer and applied as a foliar spray to stimulate the and regulate the growth. It is used mainly during the growing season. Usually it is used at the beginning of the plant, uh, plant's development and then again shortly before mat uh, maturity or harvest. Small quantities are used at a rate of one gram in 1 uh, 1.13 liter of the water per acre and it is stirred for it is stirred for one hour in the same way as by BD500 to the create a vortex. Now, after the BD500 uh, BD and BD501, again, six types of BD500 to two BD500 preparations have been made by the spinner, and these contain different type of uh, combinations. I will give you in the uh, that, uh, material of the uh, manual. So you can uh, take the you can uh, go through that manual and uh, you will found the detailed preparation of these BD five hundred two to BD five hundred eight preparation. If we talk about that BD five hundred two flowers of yarrow uh, are used for preparation of the uh, BD five hundred two. In case of BD five hundred three, uh, German Chalmolelli flowers are used. BD five hundred four it is uh, made of the leaves of Himalayan stinging uh, nettle. The BD-505 is prepared by the Himalayan oak in India. BD-506 is prepared by the uh, flowers of your dendard, uh, dandelion. Then BD-507 is prepared by the flower of valerian. And BD-508 is prepared by the casuriana. 
So the detailed discussion about these uh, different formulations will be given in your uh, lecture note of your uh, manual. Now coming to the very famous method, vermicomposting. This is well known about, among all the uh, researchers as well as the farmers. The vermicomposting, all, also known as the worm, uh, worm compost, vermicast, worm casting, or worm humus or worm manures. Different names are uh, known by the different names. Vermicomposting is known. Is the end product of the breakdown of organic matter by some species of the earthworms. Vermicomposting, uh, vermicompost is a rich, nutrient rich, net, uh, neutral fertilizer, natural fertilizers, or soil conditioner. The process of producing vermicompost is called the vermicomposting. The earthworm species are used, most often used are the banding worms, Isenia foetida, and red, red worms, that is the lumbricus species. Now, these are the materials used and prepared for the vermicomposting. In case of the first phase of the preparation of vermicomposting, uh, processing involves the collection of waste material, shredding, mechanical separation of the metal, glass, and ceramics from the material. The second phase involves the pre-digestion of organic waste for 20 days by heaping the material along with the cattle dung slurry. Uh, before the insertion of um, uh, earthworms into the uh, composting material, this compost is pre-digested because initially stays the heat will be high and uh, our earthworms will not be able to uh, survive in that heat, uh, higher heat, high, higher heat level in case of our composting material. So before insertion of the uh, uh, micro uh, this is earthworms in the composting material, the, the composting material is pre-digested. This process partially digests the material and fit for the earthworm consumption. Cattle dung and biogas slurry may be used after drying. Wet dung should not be used for vermicompost production. The third phase includes the preparation of earthworm bed. A concrete base is required to put the waste for vermicompost preparation. Loose soils will allow the worms to go into the soil and also while watering, and all dissolvable nutrients go into the soil along with the water. And fourth phase includes the collection of earthworms after vermicompost collection, saving the composted material to separate the fully composted material. And the final phase includes the storing the vermicompost in proper place to maintain the moisture and allow the beneficial microorganisms to grow. Now coming to the some natural uh, farming, now because natural farming is also coming into the popularization, so many uh, organic formulations are prepared for the uh, uh, your natural farming. The first one is the panchagavya. Panchagavya, an organic product, is potential source of play a great role in promoting the growth and providing immunity to the plant system. Biochemical properties of Panchagavya revealed that the, it possesses almost all the major nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients essential for the plant growth and hormones also it contains. And for preparation of the Panchagavya, mix thoroughly fresh cow dung, then incubate for two days, allow the, add the cow urine, then stir properly, and then add sugarcane juice, and then after sugarcane juice, add the cow milk and then cow curd and then add coconut water and add the yeast 100 gram and 12 ripened bananas. So beneficial of Panchagavya application is Panchagavya is a component of crop production and it plays a crucial role in each and every component of crop management like integrated soil fertility management, integrated pest management and integrated disease management. And what are the effects of Panchagavya application on plants is plant spread with the Panchagavya habitually produce bigger leaves and develop the denser canopy. Branching is relatively high. The rooting of the, proliferic, uh, rooting of the plant is prolific and the intense and the root spread and grow into deeper layers were also observed in case of, uh, so, uh, in case of the crops applied with the Panchagavya. Effect on soil fertility. Panchagavya improves the fertility status in soil by increasing the micronutrients and macronutrients and beneficial microorganisms, thus increase the soil health. It improves water holding capacity of soil because it acts as an organic manure and it encourages the growth and reproduction of the beneficial soil microorganisms and it increases the nutrient uptake in plant and enhances plant growth. So whatever the composting material and the natural farming organic formulations we are uh, discussing here, these during your practical and physical training, uh, these will be prepared by yourself uh, during when you will be here for your physical training. 
Another one is the Jivamrat. Jivamrat is fermented liquid organic manures, commonly used among the organic growers as plant growth enhancing substances prepared with the material available with the farmers. It is rich sources of the beneficial microflora, which, uh, which supports, stimulate the plant growth and help in the getting better vegetative growth and also good quality yield. Formulations prepared on agricultural byproducts <coughs> like plant of grains, jaggery, which are found to support the excellent growth of carrier and the storage of media. And this is the process of geometric preparation. Uh, this will be prepared by yourself uh, during your practical uh, training. Now coming to some concentrated nutrient management, this is the nutrient level we discussed during the uh, our lecture. So farmyard manure, sheep and goat manures, poultry manures, vermicompost, cattle, different manures and their nutrient levels. So whatever the method, we are improving the uh, uh, we are improving the composting process. Nutrient level will also improve. These are some uh, concentrated organic manures which contain the higher level of nutrient as compared to the bulky organic manures. And finally, these are some animal uh, based concentrated manures which contain the blood meal, meat meal, fish meal, different kinds of uh, meals uh, prepared the waste from the animal is using as the animal based concentrated organic manures. These are some further contact if you want, you can do with me. Thank you. So, any questions from the participants? No questions? So, it seems like the whole lecture is all clear to you. And they all will prepare here. That's fine, but still, if someone is having any question, he or she may please ask. So, thank you, Dr. Amrit Lalmina, for delivering a very wonderful talk on various composting techniques. You have very nicely explained with the help of your pictures and supported with figures and facts. Uh, what are the different methods like you've explained Indian Bangalore method, Indian indoor method, NEDEP method, all these methods for preparation of compost, along with the com preparation of Panch Gavya, what are the different animal or the plant based manures and manures which can be used successfully in organic farming. So thank you very much for this elusive talk. And on behalf of all the participants, I sincerely thank you for sparing your valuable time and delivering a wonderful talk. Thank you, Dr. Amrit Lalvina. Amrit, kindly unmute yourself. Yes, madam. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll take a short break of five minutes and then we'll resume for the session. Thank you. 
Il est long. Hein. 